Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to everyone. My name is Muhammad Nurnaim Mazamri, metric number AD150180. Today, I'm going to present to all of you about the production of sheets, film and filament and the coaching process. These two subtopics is the subtopics from the chapter 5, Shipping Plastics of Manufacturing Technology Subject. So, this is the polymer sheets and film characteristics. Firstly, polymer sheets are flexible and can easily be wrapped around any types of things. They are available in various sizes, thicknesses and shapes. Benefit of using polymer sheet is they are easy to fix and remove, they are chemically inert, they are resist cracking due to stress, they are non-corrosive and they have easily workability. For the plastic film, this is a, this plastic film is a thin continuous polymeric material which benefits is they can be cut or drilled, they have low moisture absorbing quality and they are warming proof. The plastic sheet's thickness usually is from 0.5 mm or 0.02 inch to about 12.5 mm 0.5 inch. The plastic sheet usually is being used as a flat window glazing or thermoforming stock. For the plastic film, the thickness is usually 0.5 to 0.5 or 0.02 inch. The plastic film is usually used for packaging such as product wrapping material, grocery bags and garbage bags. They also have been used as a stock for photographic film and pool covers and liners for irrigation dishes. The sheets and film production process. Most widely used processes are continuous high production operation. This process includes firstly slit dye extrusion of sheets and film, second blown film extrusion process, and third one, calendary. The material used for polymer sheets and film is mostly thermoplastic, which is polyethylene, polypropylene, polyvinyl chloride, and cellophane. This is the diagram of three methods. At the first one, is the the first one is the slit dye extrusion of sheets and film. The second diagram is the blown film extrusion process and the third one is calendaring process. For the slit dye extrusion of sheets and film, the production of sheets and film by conventional extrusion. Using a narrow slit as the one opening, slit may be up to 3 meter or 10 feet wide and as narrow as around 0.4 millimeter or 0.015 inch. A problem is uniformity of thickness throughout weight of stock due to drastic shape change of polymer melt as it flows through dye. Edges of film usually must be trimmed because of the thickening at the edges. The diagram beside the notes is the dye geometry of coat, coat hanger for extruding sheets. For the blown film extrusion process, blown film extrusion, film extrusion is a technology that is the common method to make plastic film, especially for the packaging industry nowadays. The process involves extruding a tube of molten polymer through a die and inflating to several times its initial diameter to form a thin film. Combines extrusion and blowing to produce a tube of thin film. This is the process sequence of the blown film extrusion process. Firstly is the extrusion of the tube. Next, the tube is drawn upward while still molten and simultaneously expanded by air inflated into it through dye. And lastly, air is blown into tube to maintain uniform film thickness and tube diameter. When you look at the diagram besides the 
you set the notes you can see the the real one the the real one the machine of the blown film extrusion process and the diagram of the schematic diagram Next is calendaring process. Calendaring process can be defined as a specialty process for high volume or high quality plastic film and sheets mainly used for PVC as well as for certain other modified thermoplastic. The melted polymer is subject to heat and pressure in an extruder and formed into sheet of film by calendaring rule. However, it is expensive equipment and high production rates. The basically, uh, the material being used in this process is rubber or rubbery thermoplastic, such as plasticized polyvinyl chlorides or PVC. Usually, the product from the calendaring process is PVC floor covering, shower curtains, vinyl tablecloths, pool liners, and inflatable boots and toys. Besides the besides the diagram is the calendar vinyl process. You can see the finished rolls determine the appearance of the rolls. Then the rolls are subsequently cooled as they pass through the cooling cylinder. Next, uh, this is the additional knowledge of the production of fiber rein reinforced plastic sheets. The, the diagram shows, shows the schematic illustration of the manufacturing process for producing plastic sheets. The, the sheets still viscous at this stage and later can be shaped into ver various products. So, we go through to the next filament and fiber. What is filament? Yes, uh, from, the, from what I have learned, uh, filament is a fiber of continuous length and basically filament products or application is basically on textile which is most important application or act as reinforcing material in polymer composites. Fiber is known as a long thin strand whose length is at least 100 times at each cross section. Fiber is usually used for communication or we also known as, known as fiber optic as electric conductor or reinforcing material in polymer composites. There are three basic steps of fiber synthesis which is include firstly the production of polymer solution, the extrusion of fibers, solidification of fibers through cooling, coagulation or evaporation. For synthesis fiber or spinning, the extrusion of polymer melt or solution through a spinneret, then drawing and wind winding into a bobbin. The term is a whole over from methods used to draw and fuse natural fibers into yarn or thread. The term spinning has been borrowed from the spinning process required to make yarns from natural fiber such as wool and is somewhat incorrect to the process the fiber solution is exuded hot spun. Spinneret is the component or die with multiple small holes in this process. There are three different methods of fiber exuction include depending on the polymer. First is the melt spinning, second die dry spinning, and three is wet spinning. So for the melt spinning, firstly the polymer granules are melted and then extruded through the spin head. The melting pump controls the flow of molten liquid to the spin head where it is filtered before extrusion to ensure any unmelted are removed so that they do not form parts of the fiber which would cause weak points. Next, the quench air cools the fiber as they emerge. In order to then spin the cool filament, lubricant must be applied 
as the synthetic fiber are not conductive and therefore static can be problem problematic the, the winding speed is a critical element to the alignment of the polymers in the fiber which will influence the strength of the resultant fiber filaments are drawn and air cooled before being spooled onto bobbin the, the figure shows the, the process of the melt spinning the starting polymer is heated to molten state and pumped through the spinneret typical spinneret usually from 6 mm or 0.25 inch thicks and contains approximately 50 holes of diameter 0.25 mm or 0.01 inch fiber produced in this manner include nylon polyethylene and polyester significant extension and thinning of filaments occur while polymer is still molten so that the final diameter wound on the bobbin may be only 1, 1 to 10 ratio of extruded size this type of process has made as a variety of benefits. One of them is it is very cost effective, the least expensive of the spinning methods in large providers the polymer solution. Second, as no solvent is used no so that no washing is required. It is high speed, making around eight hundred meter per minute. This is the diagram. So for the wet spinning, the wet spinning is look like simi similar to the milk melt spinning, but polymer is again in solution. Only solvent is non volatile. It is named wet spinning because because the fiber are extruded directly into a liquid bath. The separate polymer. Extruded is passed through a liquid chemical that is coagulated or precipitates the polymer into coherent strands which are then collected onto bobbin. Wet, wet spinning is based on precipitation where a polymer is drawn through a spinneret into a non solvent. The prepared spinning loop is extruded into the non solvent and precipitation or coagulation will occur. Fiber spun using this process includes Acyclic, rayon, aramid, and spandex. Next is the next is the dry spinning. The figure illustrates the process of the dry spinning. In the dry spinning, the polymer is dissolved in its solvent and then extruded. As the fibers emerge through the spinneret, the solvent is evaporated off with hot air. In most cases, then is then collected and reused. This type of spinning required for polymers with a matte temperature equal to or close to their thermal degradation de de temperature. Therefore, they require dissolving in a solvent in order to be processed into fibers. Extruded is pulled through a heated chamber which removes the solvent, leaving the polymer. Fibers spun using this process include cellulose acetate and acyclic. Next, we go through to the next subtopic, which is the coating processes. According to the Textile Institute, coating is a material composed two or more, at least one of which is a textile fabric and at least one of which is substantially continuous polymeric layer. This polymeric layer is applied in liquid form in solvent or water basis which evaporated which evaporates off to leave the polymer behind applied to one or both surfaces there are a few types of coating process first is the coning coat knife coating or floating knife or direct coating second direct roll coating third pet dry cure or padding technique or last and lastly, calendaring coating. 
knife coating or direct coating. A liquid coating is applied to the fabric while being run at tension under a floating knife blade. The distance between the fabric and the knife blade determines the thickness of the coating. The blades can be angled different profiles to affect the coverage. For this process to be effective, the liquid coating must be quite viscous in order to prevent it soaking through the fabric. The coating is then dried or cured. For this type of coating to be more successful, the weave structure has to be quite tight and the fabric capable of being held top. The direct roll coating. In this process, coating liquid is rolled onto the fa fabric by a roller suspended in the coating solution. Often, a blade is positioned close to, ro to the roller to ensure not too much coating solution is applied. Pet dry cure method. Also referred to as padding. This technique, widely regarded as a textile finishing technique, can in fact be used to add a variety of coatings, but this usually refers to a fiber coating for the application of micro or nano material or chemical compositions. The fabric is submerged in the coating solution, then the excess is squeezed out in the, ro in the roller which dictates the pickup percentage. The fabric is then dried and cured. And lastly is the calendar coating. Calendar finishing involves the fabric passing through a set of heat rollers to single off any surface fibers and add luster smoothness. Calendar coating is the same principle in which the fabric passes through the heat rollers, but through this process, a coating is applied as demonstrated in the figure beside. When you can look at the diagram, this diagram demonstrates the simultaneous coating of both sides of the fabric with the thickness of the coating determined by the width of the nib in between the rollers. More rollers used can provide a thinner coating. That's all from me. Thank you.